at Metro Technology Centers, we want to talk about workforce certifications in welding. And I have with me Joel Rogers, welding teacher, and Randy Palumbo, apprenticeship coordinator of the local Iron Workers Union. And Joel, a little bit about each of these certifications and what it means to have them. Uh, we offer certifications in welding processes, uh, stick, MIG, TIG, and flux core. Uh, these certifications, these credentials, uh, allow them to get their Oklahoma Department of Labor state license, welding license, and, and many of the local employers are requiring that uh, for them to work for them. Uh, we also offer certifications in forklift training uh, and some safety certifications such as OSHA 10 hour that, that uh, employers require them to have as well. And I'm assuming that these certifications are valuable in a number of different ways. Uh, yes, they are. With the certifications, they're able to make more money. Uh, more opportunities are available to them. Uh, some of those employers uh, won't hire them without those certifications. So it's, it's important that they have those. What, uh, what Has a lot changed in welding in the last few years, the technology? Uh, yeah, the technology, of course, is always evolving, uh, but a lot of the weld processes and and procedures used on sites are still very similar uh, and, this, and the needs of the employers are still much the same. Well, you, you've got so many different areas, structural components, pipeline, and pipeline may become even more uh, of a thing as time goes along. Uh, construction and state, there's really hardly any limit as to what where welding couldn't come into play. Sure, yeah. it's. There's a lot of different areas that they can go go to work, uh, manufacturing and, and construction and different things like that. Uh, construction is where a lot of ours go, go to work when they leave. Are there any particular types of jobs available in Oklahoma City? Uh, yeah, Mr. Palumbo uh, works with us. We send a number of students to the Iron Workers Union uh, where they're working in steel erection and uh, that, that type of thing. Uh, we also work with some pressure vessel shops and, and manufacturing shops, and, and some of our students go to work in those areas as well. Well, Joel, at uh, Metro Technology Centers, um, how long does the training take? We offer a number of different courses uh, that range from, from a 42 hours total, that takes a couple of months, up to 1,350 hours, that takes uh, just over a year. So it kind of depends uh, how many... Uh, how, many, how much training the individual wants uh, when they first come in, if they're just wanting a short-term course or if they want to take a full 1,350-hour full-year course. And I understand that your placement rate is phenomenal. Yeah, we have, at Metro Tech, we have, a, a, I believe it's above 96% job placement rate, and uh, we've, I believe that the welding's actually a little bit above that, so. That sounds good. What about soft skills? You you do any training as far as communication skills, interaction on the job, that type of thing? Absolutely, because our local employers, that's usually uh, the main thing that they're looking for, the soft skills, uh, regardless of the certifications the individual earns. If if they don't have those soft skills, then they're they're not employable. And we hear that from our from our local employers quite a bit about as far as, you know, showing up to work and and uh, you know those those work skills that they need uh, beyond just being able to perform the job. And something I'm really curious about, uh, uh, Randy, is the coordination of the local iron workers union mm -hmm. with this particular program. And we were talking a little about that before we got started, but I want to hear about that. Well, with us, we deal a lot, a lot with uh, Joel's program and a lot of the Votex around the state. Uh, the students they put out are excellent because they love and enjoy doing what they do with welding. And that's just one facet of our area that we do our training in. And so it helps us in our selection procedure that we're required by the Department of Labor to meet also too. So it allows us to give them more points in our selection procedure and then they're, they're just about ready to go out on the job and then continue with their welding and and receive more welding certifications from there because we're we're putting them through a three-year apprenticeship training program before they become a journeyman iron worker 
What about age demographics? Who do you see coming into this as age-wise? The average age in our area is like 31, 32 years of age. A lot of young people, a lot of older folks, and, uh, you know, it just depends on the individual how much they can handle. So it's pretty open-ended. Yes, it is. An open entry. Uh, what, uh, what about um, cost of training? In, in our area, we personally absorb all the training through our international union membership. And uh, um, so basically, we're, you know, we're, we self-perform in our, in our area. Spend quite a bit of money on each individual student. And, uh, of course, with what we do, uh, not everybody can handle the heights. So that's kind of one of the main determinants that makes people think they want to come on board with it. And then when they get up real high, they kind of change their mind sometimes. So, uh, but at the same time, it's still uh, attractive, you know, to a lot of young people too. And I suppose uh, that as well as the cost, we're looking at, uh, well, if we, we look at the, the future, I mean, it, with technology as it is, is this kind of a lifelong learning situation? Do they come back oh, as, yeah. as technology continues yeah, we, to progress? We, we call it journeyman upgrading, and they come back and, and uh, upgrade with new welding certifications. And, uh, um, you know, and, and, uh, and then the contractors, they, they, we've got in our contract now an incentive pay when they're carrying more weld certifications in their pocket, you know, through the state. And uh, and and then they're they're being paid that even if they're not because we we do other things besides weld and in the construction industry with the iron workers so they're still continuing to get that money uh, on an hourly basis so the certifications are very vitally important and has it always been pretty much a part of the process to have the certifications um, over the last uh, twenty five years and I've been with the iron workers for almost 40 years now, and I've uh, been in the, uh, co as a coordinator for about 25 years, and it's, it's, it's gotten more, how you say, red tape through American Welding Society and the requirements and, and uh, welding certifications, and Joel's a certified welding inspector himself. You know, it's just, it's just a greater demand for, uh, um, you know, the codes to be followed, you know, through, uh, by the letter. Which requires specific training. Yes, sir. Just, just for it's that. It's the only way to get it. Yeah. And and here in Oklahoma City or in in Oklahoma, do we need more welders? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need more qualified welders. And and I'm I'm hearing that as the emphasis is qualified. Yeah. Uh, and so how how is in other words, you could use more people walking through the door wanting to become welders. We the even the contractors say, hey, we'll pay you more money an hour if you'll get your welding certifications. And so they're the ones that are negotiating across the table to, so that, uh, you know, the people that are working in the industry will seek out the welding certifications. Well, Randy, you, uh, you've been in the business for long enough. Have you seen a lot of changes just in the technology? Sure. The instruments sure. used in welding over mm -hmm. the last 40 years? Yeah, the machines have gotten so much more smaller but yet put out so much more perfection, you know, and uh, it's, you know, it's just totally unbelievable compared to like, you know, 35 years ago. And as far as equipment at Metro Technology Centers, I'm assuming they have the uh, cutting edge equipment that they're using. Yeah, we have a state of the art facility. Our welding shop is, was recently remodeled. Uh, our, we've got uh, welding Almost every welding machine in our shop is a multi-process machine, and we've got a lot of updated equipment, uh, some of the best welding equipment I've, I've seen in a training center anywhere. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the businesses and entities that you end up having your folks working with, just all well, kinds of companies? Uh, Mr. Mr. Palumbo is, a, is an obvious one because I'm a, I'm a product of that system myself, coming, coming from you know, uh, career tech course and going through their training. And then some of my students are interested in that. Not all of them are, as he had mentioned earlier, like the heights, some of the elements that they're exposed to. Uh, so we also send students in the manufacturing sector uh, as far as locally. Uh, 
Boardman's. We've recently partnered with Boardman's, and we've started uh, doing some sending some students over there. And Trinity, Trinity, Man excuse me, Trinity uh, Industries in Oklahoma City, as well as uh, Chesapeake Compass. We sent some welders over there, and so a number of different manufacturing and construction businesses. And I understand that uh, uh, Metro Technology Centers monitors and follows up with their folks even after the classes. Yes, sir. We, we do follow up uh, once a year. Uh, we check on our, our graduating class from the previous year and see how, how they're doing. Uh, in addition to unofficially, we, we usually track them for several more years beyond that. What's going to be happening, and I'll just make this open for either of you, what's going to be happening in the next five or ten years, you think, in, in welding? Are there big changes on the way? I think manufacturing is manufacturing processes are becoming more innovative all the time, uh, and the as far as equipment that's needed and those types of things. And in the construction sector, uh, we're going to just continue to have the demand for for the young skilled workers that can fill those positions. As as a, as a previous group is retiring out. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, definitely retiring out. <laughs> A lot of the older guys are getting older. So somebody's got to replace them. Yes, sir, that's correct. And they need to be more qualified than they've ever been before. We can't emphasize uh, the uh, high school kids that are in their junior and senior year really need to take their training very seriously and uh, when they're there and in their welding programs um, because they're going to use it for the, the rest of their life if they pursue it as a career. Yeah. And they will meet... Uh, Folks like myself, and uh, and you know it's not that we demand a lot, but uh, if they're paying the wages and the benefits that that uh, our employers are offering, such as Bennett Steel out of Tulsa or Allied Steel here out of Oklahoma City, um, you know they're going to expect professionalism. Absolutely. And the old phrase "you're hired from the neck down" is true, but they have to have a head on their shoulders to be able to think. That's the soft so, skills. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, sir, that is correct. And, and, the te and the understanding of, of, of technology also. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, uh, you, I really wanted to flesh this out because some people hear, about, hear welding mm -hmm. <laughs> and they think, well, it's something to do in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. But the technology is so much more extensive. Uh, back to you for a minute, Randy. Uh, can you think of a success story, somebody over the years who's maybe come into this business and it just really... They realized it was what they they wanted, and it kind of changed their life. I've had a I've had some students that have actually come from Votec because again we you know we get they come from all the local Votecs, and uh, um, not to take away from yours, Joe, because you sent us a lot of students, and I think of a couple of his students that uh, they come from some backgrounds of life where they might have been in prison, and and uh, you know and just took the wrong path as a young person. And uh, come back on board, and really learned, you know, what it takes to survive in life, and and uh, make it, and go out and become foremans, general foreman, superintendents on the job sites, and uh, do a really good job. And some of those guys were from the Botex too. And so, really, what we're saying here is that this can be a journey for a person that can cover a lot of different areas sure. of life. Well, it's a. It, I always put it this way because I interview people every week for work. And uh, one young lady from uh, Midwest City this morning from um, Jeff Hayes' program, uh, she's looking for a job, but she wants that job to turn into a career. Uh -huh. And that's what it does. It doesn't start the first day, you know, after being there for a few years, learning and the ins and outs. And then it starts turning into a career because it doesn't just stop with welding. You can get into leadership positions and you can be over several welders. Uh, I'm, glad that you I'm glad you mentioned that. That That is important, and our, our time is gone. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Joel Rogers, welding teacher, Randy Palumbo, pr apprenticeship coordinator at the local Iron Works Union. Thank you for being here to help us today. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, whether it's automotive career training, network office specialists, skilled industry maintenance technicians, or other trades such as welding, Becoming trained and certified in one of these fields opens up a way to long-term success.